No one's ever done the nine data with the uh, the double start on TV. Would tonight be the night? Well, you never know. Anything can happen. At this Skybet World Grand Prix 2006, Peter Manley 4-1 has been Andy Smith. Dennis Priestley will play the winner of the Taylor Shelton Showdown, which is next. And uh, takes the match to uh, round off the evening. Bob Anderson rolling back the years as he takes on uh, the guy who's been uh, rising up the rankings, Terry Jenkins, who still has the, uh, the Premier League on his mind. This place was uh, reverberating last night after the showdown between Taylor and Barnabell, uh, Eric Bristow's here. It's uh, quite a tasty atmosphere out there right now, isn't it? It's, it's, it's getting warm out there, it's hot, yeah. They, they, they love it, don't they? they? It's their weekend, back on the weekend, they've come here for a bit of fun. What does Shelton have to do to, to trouble Taylor? Take about six darts up there, I think, the way he plays. And he doesn't, doesn't play right against Phil, does he? The best game he played on TV was when he played Barnaville at that time. Semi-final of the, the Premier League. Played yeah. marvellous. That's, that's the sort of game he's got to take up there against Phil. It was 11-7 up against Phil in the semi-final the, the year before. So he's, he's had some that's good right. performances against Taylor, or that's a good performance. He can. He can, he, he can stick a, like eight or nine good legs together. And that's what he's got to do tonight. If he wins 12 legs, he'd do him. So, as you said before, he was 11-7 up. If he can play as well as that, it, but I, I don't know, he's got a bad neck. He's, he's been seeing the chiropractor for the last two or three days. Cholton, like, yeah. And you don't want to go... Any, you want, when you play Phil Tully, you want to be, you want to be right, don't you? you? don't want to have a bad neck playing him. OK, Roland Cholton uh, waiting in the wings. Phil Taylor, well, he can't believe the reaction to last night's victory over Barnabell. Do you know the phone calls we've had today, um, of people watching that one game, you know, every, everybody, everybody that I know, watched that game last night. I think the viewing figures must have gone through, must have been sky high as such. Um, so, uh, massive game last night was, for me anyway. Uh, just to get this little onus off me that I'll beat him three times, you know. It, it's, but it's, it's just exciting when you play Ray. He's a good player, he doesn't bottle, he carries on. So, uh, looking forward to the next few battles with Raymond. Roland's playing really well. We've had some cracking games in, in the last few weeks, me and Roland. He's playing really, really well. Uh, managed to pep him, but He's still hard to beat and he's getting more experience, so it's, he's, he's a good player. They've been queuing up since 12 o'clock this morning. It's going to be buzzing. The atmosphere is going to be fantastic. It is uh, fantastic out there. All eyes on the Dutchman, all eyes were on his countrymen last night. As Barnabell tried to do a job on Taylor, can he do a job on Taylor tonight? Our MC, Phil Jones. Ladies and gentlemen, would you now please welcome on stage for our third quarter final. From Den Haag in Holland, Roland Schouten! Ladies and gentlemen, six times World Grand Prix Dance Champion, Phil! The Power! Taylor! <laughs> from all over the place right now. They want a shot of that man, Phil the Power Taylor. He's caught the public's imagination with his nine darters, with his world championships. 
He's got the green shirt on, trying to get those Irish fans on his side. Last night the crowd split, a lot were cheering for Barnabal, it had to be said. But what a night we had last night. Can this match live up to what we saw? 2,000 people packed into the City West Hotel here in Dublin. They've been queuing out of the door for hours and hours and hours. And Roland Shelton is going to have his work cut out. Commentators Stuart Pike and Sid Waddell. When Irish eyes are smiling, show the powers on the stage. Because here in good old Dublin, fill the power is the rage. Shelton, a chaser in most matches against the power. A chaser, seen at the power in 2005, licked in the semi-final of the PDL, here he is. 24 gram unicorns, Bradwell, Stoke on Trent, that's the posh end, wasn't always there. Beat Newton to zip, beat Barney in that classic last night, 3-1. Stewart, what do you reckon? Well, Taylor for me looks totally relaxed. Last night on his walkout before the match against Barney, he was in the zone, he was totally focused. The walk on tonight, he was smiling, he was laughing, he was joking, totally different. And I just wonder how much Roland Shelton's neck injury will come into play. He really is struggling, the Dutchman. But uh, Taylor getting his underway, first to four, and he'll face Dennis Priestley in the semis. No Roland back the years, those two. Anyway, stiff neck, brass neck, could get a bit of tungsten neck after what Taylor might dish out. Had a 93 average against Barney Veld. This goes off. Charlton, oh, beautiful. Come on, fly in. 120. 93 average. That's as good as 103 straight in. Such a fantastic shooting earlier tonight. Manly, 21 shots to get off. Got 20 of them. Here's the power away already. And what has got? 117. Dublin. Dublin. Roland Shelton in all the years, has never beaten Phil Taylor in a major tournament, in a minor tournament, in an exhibition. He's come close, but he's always failed to get over the finishing line. A couple of very handy uh, indications of what he's capable of in the stats against Dave Askew. Shot an average 97 and had 116 finish. His average went down against Steve Beaton, former world champion. Uh, and But he had 100 finish there. And it's very encouraging for the Dutch fans that he's in like a shot into the 60 early doors. He will have to match the power scorer. The power doesn't like that. Can't stack there, goes for the cover. He will have to match him and may have to take out some 116 and higher finishes. Roland, you require well, Roland, a finish already, 161. Now, which way will he go? Surely have to come down here, but uh, Shelton 65. could take this first leg here against the throw. Let's see. Well, one thing we know about Taylor is he sometimes uh, does not get the range right from the practice board to the tournament board. It's a lovely stack of dart there, this one. You bet the bungalow would be in. 140. Rolling to require 96. So, for Shelton, possible 14 dart opening leg. Still needs the treble. 56. At 101 average for that visit. Encouraging for Shelton fans. 93. But the power can mince this in two darts. Looking up the bull area because it leaves a two dart shot now. Front 18. Bull to send ripples up the E dam. 68. Kiss the wire. Roland, you require 40. Chance for Shelton through this match. He's going to have to take every chance he gets. Double 10. On the wire. Nice slider off the barrel or an air shot. Oh! Betwixt and between. Far too powerful. Well, surely Taylor won't miss here. 
There we go. Middle of the bed. Shelton have three chances to take the first leg against the darts. Game on. Um, that doesn't augur well for the Dutchman. It has to be said that when you get chances, especially early on against Sixth Taylor, thing. you have to take every single one of them. And you know the Tiller is probably going to have a slackish by his grids now, lads. Opening set. It's first of four sets made to progress. Charlton seems to be steaming away. Ballsy. Blackpool a few months ago against James Weir, who we just seen. And then we picked him 19 17 in the semi with a 10 darter at the end. And could do that, the blocker dart over the 60. He's lobbing the dart a bit. This is not 58. a well weighted throw by Shelton. Well, it was three nights ago that uh, Shelton woke up and went to stretch and damaged two discs in his neck. And he's had to go for three, possibly four visits to the, uh, the chiropractor. But at the moment, with that neck, and I was a chiropractor, I had charge him with treble. Lovely last dart. Is that euros or pounds? You know, it's Geordie Skinny, that would be pounds. Lovely first dart by the power. Room to stack on the barrel of the Benny one. One hundred. Remember, that ten years ago on Sky, the world pairs. Down at Bogner, he played with Barney Veld in that. They won the tournament, and he was the anchor man. Shorten with this lovely style. Out of a John Law book of how to play darts. Solid, but this is out of the pottery sphere. Keep your heart out, Wedgwood. This is good edge. 140. Now the familiar throw that has taken him to 13 World Championships and over 50 major titles, Phil Taylor. 60. Phil, you require 100. It's uh, Shots Lady Mariah with uh, Mason's wife, Lorna. Topsy wants to go to zip. Now, this is an understacker, which is not his best shot. 65. Rolling well, 142. 142. Slim pickings for the Slim Dutchman. Taylor will be back to take a two-leg lead. 43. Shelton looks 35. as if he's struggling, clearly. Absolutely. Two 16s. Taylor like got one leg away from the opening set. That's the move about three quarters of an inch to eight. Yeah, the bench again, ominous for Sean Taylor. Third leg, Phil to throw first. Game on. Let's see how much this problem affects Roland Shelton. His neck is actually in spasm. And uh, he says that he's had pendle, pins and needles all the way down his left arm, not his throwing arm, but it really is affecting his game. And mentally, he cannot be 100% either. Well, the power looking as though he's taking it as a stroll in the park, but underneath that suave exterior, that svelte exterior, it's a hard, pure flint. The power might well treat this as a chance. There's no disrespect to Shelton. But after the rook with Barney last night, brilliant comeback into the game by Barney to eventually end up 3-1 down. The power, I think, will just rely on class rather than adrenaline for this one. Well, to be fair at the moment, he really isn't having to try too hard. Shelton hasn't yet produced the challenge that we know on his 60. day he's capable of. Irish eyes there smiling. And the McCracken. And oh, where's the tournament? Michael Flat lead your heart out. That boy can step. And so can Taylor, but not on the gas at the moment. 58. Well, a great story about Taylor said he uh, he gave his darts away after the match against Barneveld, as he always does. 60. And uh, 
to an eight-year-old lad called Sean Canavan, and the lad actually minded the darts all night. He thought that Taylor wanted them back today, so he turned up at the arena looking for Taylor to give his, his darts back. Yes. 41. There he is on the right there, chilling. Anthony McCracken Thank you, ladies and from Rat Cool. He was anything but a cool cat from Rat Cool the other night when they went in good for him. Whirling like a Dublin dervish. This is the sort of stuff he needs. Whoa, Magic! Bit of a real show in coming out there. Causing the banging of the bod run. Gonna come down here, Taylor. Super pick off the treble 18 there. Ireland, you require 141. Trying to save set one against the one and only power. Well, good shooting from Shelton. Will it be good enough? Taylor 114. Well within the radar. 14. Missed the big 14. Well, that's a slack of days ago, as you'll see, the power. He bust as well. His last start went in the treble 17. He threw it away and he bust his score. A rare big blob by the power to it. He instills Rulland. Saves the set for now. Now, Fourth leg, this Rowan is where Taylor might well fire Stay in a ten-dot leg. One slip, no matter how minute, usually means galvanisation of the power. Well, let's see how much confidence it's given Shelton. And that first leg of the match could be all important. Remember, he had three darts to take no the first leg of this quarter-final against the throw. As I say, let's see what the power reacts to his own mistake by. As usual, usually pulverizational. Seventy-nine. Well, Shelton has to get away with these three darts. Yes, good start. Eighty. Last night against Barney Taylor, finding the sixty, but not stacking as well as he can. Barney, I'm sure, had a problem with this new dart through and style angle in the dart a lot. But here's what I predicted. When he gets pain, he kicks hard himself. Oh, losing the line by the width of the wire. Bit of a recovery for Tiller. Tiller now, you'd think from here, would be her shot and a double and we've seen what the pressure on Taylor can do with his three darts where Barney beat him with yeah, three oh, misses never seen that before but look at this leg that's firing in now He's sitting on a 12 dart I haven't made a colossal mistake by busting his previous shot 97 30 so for the set full Taylor and to do it in style with a 12 data. Here we go. Double 16 for the power. No bother. Let's do one go sit. If he makes a slip, he then lets rip. Power coasting here against the injured shoulder. Power leads. One set to zip. So Phil Taylor coasting to a one-set lead against the struggling Dutchman Roland Schulten, playing through the pain barrier with a bad neck injury. But Taylor is all smiles. What a contrast to last night. He was focused. He was in the zone. Tonight you just get the feeling that he's very, very relaxed, very chilled.
And, uh, well, perhaps he'll have to concentrate a bit more. Great stuff from Shelton. Yeah, last night he was like King Kong with banana belly ache. He is here in a much more jovial mood. Averaging only 84 against, against Barney. His end average was 93. And this lad, his task can be measured in the averages. Strull against Dave Askew, 3-1 and 3-1. Put only two legs. Six average, eight. 97. But there was no pressure then. When there was pressure from Steve Beaton, his average dropped at 85. At the minute, Shelton's on 83. He might need to push that nearer 95 against the power. Well, that average of 97 in the first round, the best of the week so far, and he's going to have to match that, Sid. You're absolutely right if he's going to get anywhere near Taylor. But um, we know in patches that Shelton can produce magical darts. 59. That performance against Barnevel in the uh, Premier League semi-finals back in May at Plymouth was was absolutely awesome. Barney was blown away, so we know Shelton has the ability. I would think, though, as they say, the most important muscle-led dart is the one between your lugs. And this is Taylor behind him, not Barney. As I say, he knows over the years that Barney's beatable. I think Roland thinks that Taylor isn't beatable. Other than when you're on superb form, and he maybe hits a slack leg. Well, Shelton has reached a final here in Dublin. Lost to Warrener five years ago, and he had a nightmare on that night. I think it was 8-2 uh, in sets, Warrener won. Yeah, because the power had been done down the early doors by Kevin Pinter. Well, see, Shelton started this leg with a, a perfect 160, and just look where we are now. Sitting waiting for the power to a 14 dart. 88. Failure required, 77. Travel 19 starts the combo. Two tens for a 14 dart. Clear! Clear! And the first Clear! Clear! Phil Taylor. Me predicted a banner in. Phil to Roberts. Well, Taylor going Clear! for a seventh. World Grand Prix title in the nine-year history of this tournament. But you just get the feeling, don't you, that everything at the moment for Taylor is gearing towards the Circus Tavern in December and that relentless pursuit of his of a 14th world title. Talking in a national newspaper, we'll tip him for Sports Personality of the Year shortlist, about 14 or 15 world titles now. Remember when he said 13 was his lucky number, and that's all he wanted. 80. He's greedy for the trophies. Greedy to give Mrs. Taylor more and more polished work with a metal. Shelton at the moment just doesn't seem to have an answer. And uh, well, Taylor doing Whoa. what Taylor does best. Hate to say it, but this is going to turn into an exhibition. Crown. Massive, massive support here in Isla for Taylor over the years. Here's what Shelton's got to do, and doing it at the right time. Oh, oh yes! Showing what he's made of, the Dutch lad. 180 from Taylor. 180 from Shelton. And now Taylor. 99. That's a settle for a mere 99. A sloppy 99. Anyway, Charlton's doing what he has to do. He's pushed his average up to 85 to the powers 90. 105. One thing about Charlton, even though he's got the neck problems, he won't do the marble drift left to the five. He's not going to do that because he has a beautiful up and down the board straight through. Only 60. Rolling to require 100. So 136 for Shelton. More than capable. Not now. So here's me seeing another drift. Well, if he's throwing such a slack dart, there is a lot of trouble in that neck. Because he's one of the straightest plumb line throwers through the middle of that 60. I see Rowland. Still needs the treble. Not that one. It's too heavy a dart that would have left the bowl. 
So he has the sort of crumb that tail out of the UFC 108 rising to 160. Rolling to require 108. Treble 18, bullseye to rescue it. Sensational leg it would be. 78. Well, he was nowhere near, really, Rolling was he? 44. So Taylor to carry on the procession. That's right, wanted to skin the Edam, hit the ball there. Now to go further ahead, Ken Owens, 216s. Now, will he try the... usually tries to use the line. Oh, magic! Human beings would go for the low wide open ends! Leg, to like Rogers. a running back, hurling into the red the zone. Please. Taylor takes the tough option, because he can. I just wonder whether this has got a, a feel of a 4-0 victory for 40. Taylor. Let's hope not. Shelton is capable, as we've mentioned, of, of producing some sensational darts. But he clearly looks to be struggling. And Taylor is doing all that he needs to take another step towards another final. Well, let's take a wit. He took Barney to the cleaners at the end of the Premier Darts League, did this lad. This is... Shot and esque darts, but he's got to do that roughly three visits per leg. It is no good plonking the odd 180 or 140 against this bloke. That's the perfect dart. The second one. Oh. Magic. Well, Taylor 46, of course, now. He just seems to be getting better with age, doesn't he? Still striving for darting perfection. Shelton's still striving for his first ever 16. victory over Taylor. You've got to say that at the moment it ain't going to come tonight. Under stack, if he's getting this right, he'll go home now. He isn't getting it right. Come a shot now. 99. Well, believe it or not, uh, Taylor, apart from being very strong physically and working a manual job, so on a leg. If Aideen was a star disco dancer around Stoke on Trent, at the Sneed Arms. And he is still a very, very fit man. 102. So Taylor's going to come back for tops to take the leg to take the set and to take control with a 13 data. 83, thirty require 40. Tops in what is turned into a procession. Double 10, 14 data. Yeah, Middle of the, the bed. Set. Phil Taylor. Well, he hasn't got 76 trombones or a daft hat with a bomb bomb. But Taylor is putting on an exhibition for his legions of Irish fans. Still to get away. He was angry with himself for those opening three darts. He's had enough of tops. Fifty-two. Last then maybe you like for Shelton. He actually speaks better English than some commentators I could name. One hundred. But he will have a few words, I think, to sum up this later on to the press. But that is the perfect dart by the power. One oh, slack. He, I thought he'd been on the barrel of the second dart. Well, Shelton is clearly in pain here. Six, you see, eight. normally, yeah, good. Normally, when he gets that blocker dart, which he, which he gets on the middle of the bed, he can't get too fast when he's playing really well. He was nowhere near using that line, wasn't Shelton. 
Still has a good opportunity, though, to win Rolling a leg. 116. He'll have at least six darts at this, will Shulton. 218s. Yeah, if you look at Roland Shelton's left arm, now that's the one that has been causing all the problems. I mentioned earlier on in this match, said that he's got permanent pins and needles on his left arm, and it's clearly bothering him. He's, it's hardly Roland. moving at all. Roland, you're yeah, exactly. All it is doing at the moment is forming a cushion for his darts. It's no part of his balance, no part of the throwing muscular action. 27. He's holding that left arm. Only require 109. See, so normally he'd be taking the darts out with his left arm. Yeah, no doubt at all. Playing with an injury. Shelton. 93. Well, Rolling no, Shelton, as I do, said he won't make it as an excuse, but uh, double four for Trevor's Comfort and only a second leg Rolling of this quarter final. Third leg, Phil to Throwfords. Game on. You can see in the background, can't you, Sid? Well, the, uh, the nerve that do come down the neck are connected to the spine and also the radial nerve to the arm. Now that, no that, so that, the point of injury is the neck, but the referred pain is to the arm. Very obvious, so he's not even pulling the darts out. As I say, he would normally walk up now 60. and lift his left arm to pull them out and put them into the right hand. So definitely injured. Yeah, I'm in a lot of pain, but it's hardly surprising, said two slip discs. The neck is still in spasm, and pins and needles permanently all the way down one arm. 32. But quite simply, if it had been in his throwing arm, he would not have been able to play tonight. And a second dart. 100. Four sets if you win. Crowd accepting that this is going to be a Tiller period. And um, even if it is just a parade, nobody will hold the flag high, higher than the power. 58. He knows that Shelton's struggling, and, and to, to be honest with you, it's, it's not like Taylor here because uh, he's, str he's struggling as well because he knows that the match is won. He knows he all, all he has to do is put nice his foot on the pedal. And uh, just think about the emotional pressure he took from Barney last night. So maybe there's a slight reaction involved there as well. Yeah, that's uh, a tired-looking dart to me. And there's more wobble in the flight than you normally see, but the result... Taylor sitting on an 84 average, which is not Taylor-esque, to his opponent's 80, which is down on an 86 tournament average from Roland. And as we said, 96 average in his first match against Askew. 52. Oh, the, you can see the pain on his face there. Shelton certainly won't walk away from this, no matter how much pain he's in. But uh, apart from the pain in his arm and his neck, this whole experience will be very painful for the Dutchman because he knows 97. that he can do a lot better than this. And a, and a fully fit Shelton may well have given Taylor a run for his money tonight. Fascinating shot, that of the Taylor delivery of the dart, the perfect weight where he intends the angle 56. of entry to alter in the last foot. He deliberately has an angle of entry that is about 10 degrees parallel to the hockey. So that it can be used to open the target. Comes for cover now. 137. See what I mean? Rolling, that is a deliberate angle to optimize the bouncing effect of the next dart. 60. Two weights. Oh, 120. Well, he deserved that, Shelton. Fairly requires uh, 70. Certainly would have given him a boost. But here's Taylor for 78. Fat 20. Then what they call in Stoke, the lipstick. Skinny Redbit. 
Games on the third there it way. is. Shelton Third's very, very there. close to a 1 3 6. Do you know what? I, I honestly think that Taylor Game knows that, that Shelton's struggling as well. He will have been practicing in the players' room. Shelton was no due score. to have a little bit of treatment on that neck just before he came out to play this match. Coming up next, former world champion Bob Anderson, who will be 59 in a few days' time. Credit to the senior citizens. We'll take on Terry Jenkins in our next match. Well, that dart left Taylor scratching his head in amazement. You can see, can't you? That left arm is, well, it's just redundant. Yeah. It's purely there to hold the darts. He's not even using his left arm, or maybe can't, to pull the darts out. Crowd, somnolent, wanting to erupt, singing the fields of Athen Rye during the break. Uh, either a song of romance or a dirge, whichever way you look at it. And how Roland will feel about it. Yeah, you just can't see, they will know as well that uh, you just can't see anything else other than a 4 0 victory for 60. Phil Taylor in this quarter final. Too far away to be a stacker. No shot needed. No shot successful, but that's a stacker dart. This could land on the barrel. One hundred. Just touched the wrong side of the barrel. But the power poised to make it three sets to nil against Roland Shelton. One hundred and twenty-three. Failure required ninety. Got to give it to him. But another technical point, if you're holding that arm into your ribs like he is, it affects his balance apart from anything else. Normally the left arm would be about six inches away from the hip to get correct balance. 50. Well, your heart goes out to Shelton, but there's no sentiment in this sport. And Phil Taylor is powering his way into the semi finals. He leads by three sets to nil. And Shelton has taken only two legs in the match so far. Taylor dominated this tournament since it came from England to Ireland. Wexford, 2000. Won the tournament, danced the jig with the Cayley Society. Girls, a year ago, blitzed like in the final 7 1. Now just 120. Cream through the next three legs. Well, you mentioned Colin Lloyd beaten by Bob Anderson in the first round. Lloyd has, has hung around this week to watch the action and uh, a bit of R&R &R and a bit of golf but he must be thinking of what might have been in that top half of the draw so wide open 100 see that's the classic way you, you, you don't give your right arm any extra effort you, uh, most darts players pull the darts with the non-throwing arm it's part of the ritual of toe in the hockey 58. and then the back tilt of the leg See, look how scrunched up the arm movement is on the throwing arm. So you cannot assume proper balance if you have to hold your damage side to relieve the pain. So apart from the pain, that stance is not aligned properly for Adler through. 
Taylor, you've got to credit Taylor though, he's just going about his business. 92. Chalking off each leg as it's won, as he closes in on victory. In fact, the, uh, the way he's walking is a classic case of Rep's neck. What reps get when they drive fast places and don't put their shoulder 82. muscles down. Sheldon is actually Rolling walking down the hockey, favouring his right side, showing just how much the left side is damaged. Yeah, bullseye here for Sheldon. This would spark him. Get the biggest cheer of the night. Is that a gun in? Requires there we go for another leg for Taylor. Looking at the ball, maybe. Oh, oh, yes. Double eight to get to the finish line quick. Again, he will probably use the barrel shot. He'll use the lie. Games on the first leg. Phil Taylor. Took into account that would take a look like what a genius. He knows the difficulty Game ratio on. of some of the shots. Nobody tries more daring shots in this game. Yeah. Sad to see Roland Shelton in this sort of pain on and off the hockey. Um, I think we've got to hope from his point of view that uh, it isn't 59. too serious. The World Championships are only six weeks or so away so he really will be hoping that he can get this problem sorted and sorted quickly, Said You just don't know how bad it is, but two slip discs and a spasm in the neck doesn't sound too good to me. Yeah. I'm packing me bag and trying to talk Essex talk. Already looking forward to the Circus Tavern of the World Championship, the greatest dart show on Earth, starting on the 18th of December, folks, here on Sky. Don't miss a dart. You know, he'll keep on going, Shelton, but there'll be a part of him that hopes that Taylor wins these, these next two legs, I'm sure. Well, you're dead right, they'll be practised together. I mean, I remember in the old days, you know, they didn't practise in the same room. Jockey Watson would be 50 yards from Alan Evans at the Jolly's Club. They didn't let them practise together, there was so much bad feeling. It is a measure of the games now that there is so little bad feeling between players that they actually practice within about 10 feet of each other, or sometimes on the same board. So Tiller will have been watching this lad struggle for at least three hours before kickoff time. He can't check out 168, of course, but he can um, go a long way to taking him to another leg. 60. Well, credit Shelton for having a go and credit to Shelton for coming out on the stage. May well have been tempting to actually scratch and, and have this match to Taylor. All the 16s here. Fat bit. Skinny green bit. And the check out. Leg. It's three sets, it's two legs, and one more Third leg needed leg. for Taylor to go Rolling. through with the greatest of ease to the semi-finals. As a sufferer from chronic neck and back pain himself, I know what it's like. The referred pain from vertebrae high in the neck is reflected in the arm and in the left shoulder blade in Shelton's case. That's why he's holding his arm as if it had a green stick fracture. 32. Yeah. Shelton was saying at the end of his second round match against Beaton, the pain was so acute, it felt like he had a, a football stuck under his skin at the top of his shoulder blade, between the shoulder blade and the neck. 51. Exactly, that's where the most pain is. From Wait, well, your posture has to change to get away from the pain, to ease off the pain, and that puts all stress on other bits of you. Taylor putting stress on the 60 now, trying to sew it up fast. He has got a barn door to aim at. One hundred and forty. Phil, been in. You sense it won't be too long before Taylor puts Shelton out of his misery. Ninety-two. 
100. Pain etched all over the face of the Dutchman. The consolation that Shelton could take from this week, of course, said he's done enough to get back in the Premier League in 2007. So get going for your tickets, folks. We'll get a bit more now. Or up in the John. Hottest ticket last year, even hotter. Runners and riders, if you'd like. Taylor. Yeah, Lloyd, Priestley, Shelton, Manley. One more place to be confirmed, possibly Mardle. But you feel here that the end is nigh in this quarter final. 122. Well, our fans can't come once, it was the score before it was televised. That four people could watch and two of them wouldn't know what the score was. Now people are flocking in their thousands to venues like this. 2,000 people as Taylor goes to a two donor to sew it up and end the pin for the moment for Roland. Match point two hits, still a chance. Knowing him, he'll try and bump it in off the line. Hit the line, but on the wrong side of the way. Roland requires So, 68. two missed for the match. Can Shelton take us into another leg? Well, I think he... Uh, 38. Yeah, he needed the ball there, Shelton. Right smile of resignation on the face 16. of Roland Shelton. Here we go, then. Taylor for the match. Double hit. Game shot! So, Phil Taylor to an average of a mere 88. Against the damage to Pullman with a bad neck, who end up there looking like a half cripple. Couldn't use the left arm even to pull the darts out. Coming up next, though, we've got more action. Bob Anderson, former world champion, will play Terry Jenkins. Comfortable, very comfortable for uh, Philip Howard Taylor. Still on course for a seventh Grand Prix title. An injured Roland Shelton. Really didn't turn up tonight, but uh, credit to him for uh, for turning up at all when he was uh, in obvious pain. Uh, here's what's happened. Three men through to the semi-final. One more to be sorted out. Peter Manley through 4-1 over the pine and Andy Smith. Dennis Priestley will now play Phil Taylor in the semi after his 4-2 win over James Wade. Taylor through four zip against uh, Roland Shelton. Still to come, the limestone cowboy, Bob Anderson, former world champion against Terry Jenkins. Remember, if Jenkins gets to the final, he knocks Wayne Mardle out of Premier League contention and he takes his place, so a lot at stake in that. Uh, Phil is here. Congratulations, Phil. He, he, he was... He was obviously injured, and yeah. it, it, it's hard to, to, to lift uh, your game. Yeah, he pulled a couple of discs in his spine, and he's not very well, to be honest. He's had uh, therapy the last couple of days, a chiropractor, and, he, you know, you, you just sense this. But sometimes it's it's difficult for you as well as opponent, because you know he's not right. You know, Roland's a lot better player. Than was, was there any tour behind the scenes of him scratching the match and, and not No, I don't all? think so. I think Roland actually went out there to win, obviously, you know, but... I just kept thinking, put the pressure on him, put the pressure on him. That's what I am. I mean, I'm... I'm All going well for you. Last night was, was incredible against Barnevelt. And, and you night, said the yeah. phone's been going all day, the text messages have been flying in. It's been brilliant. I think last night was, um, not being disrespectful, but probably the final, to be honest. It was uh, buzzing. I know you said the viewing figures last night were, were unbelievable. So that just shows you the calibre of... of Raymond Van Bardeville, do you know what I mean? He, he's, he's a brilliant player, and I'm sure over the next few years, you've got me and him are going to be in many, many, many battles. Do you feel the effects of a match like that? Just the, 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 the mental no. draining that, you, that must go on, and the, even in the physical, in the heat. Listen, to be honest, if I was being truthful, when you look at the draw, and you know, normally I don't look at all the draw, you know, I, I didn't know I was playing in the semi final until he just told me. Um, when you know you've got Ray Barneville second round, then you think to yourself, listen, get through this you can win the tournament, you know, because he's a tough cookie, he is a good player. I mean, I'm not so bad myself, but he's, <laughs> he's, he's good, and, and he doesn't give in, do you know what I mean? And he hits the doubles at the right time, you know, the 97 out was, was class. Not a lot of players could do that, see, under that pressure.
Uh, you and Dennis have had one or two battles over mm. the years. He said... Um, we can have another one tomorrow. Yeah, he's, 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 he seems to have improved uh, immeasurably over the last year. Incredible. He's now in the Premier League. He's dedicated. That's that's what it is. You know, uh, I think about 18 months ago, Dennis said, I'm going to I'm going to retire. And I was like, I was gutted because I didn't want to see him retire. You know, I said, you do and I'm going to shoot you, you know. But yeah, and, and he hasn't. And he's back to what he, what he can do. You know, it's all about practice and dedication. And, as you, as you get older, you know what you've got to do. When you first start playing darts, you know what practice that you have to do to become a, a world champion or whatever. But it's keeping that practice up. That's the hard part. It's easy. Like James Wade has climbed up the rankings, young Aidan's climbed up the rankings. The hard part is staying there. Well, our next, our that's next what player, me and Dennis have done for Bob, a long, long Bob time. Anderson as well, just incredible. He's another He's 59, fella. Yeah. Next birthday, We've been two talking, weeks time. Yeah. I said, Bob, you, you could be in the Premier League next year. No, no, I said, Bob, you can, you know what I mean? But, and that's your target. When you get up in the morning, you think, I don't feel like practising, I don't feel like being dedicated, because it is hard work. It's like any, any other sport, do you know what I mean? Uh, old people think, oh, dark players, they just go down the pub. No, we don't. You never see them in a pub. Very, very, very rare. We'll let you get off to it's bed. dedication. Yes. Get some relaxation out of bed. I'm going to watch this. I'm going to watch this. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you, really, really Thank good you. performance. Uh, next up.